Welcome back to Survey of Engineering. We are continuing in our chemical engineering unit and today we will be talking about the bioreactors that you will be building in class. Here are your portfolio questions for this video. Number one, why don't we just do the reactions to produce the lipids or the oils that we want um, from the algae ourselves? Number two, what are the important considerations in the design of your photobioreactor? And number three, what are the phases of cell growth and what happens during each of those phases? So we're going to talk about a portion of a chemical engineering called biochemical engineering. This is the use of biology within chemical engineering and this is done in the food in industry especially within uh, the beverage industry you can think of fermentation and and that sort of thing um, it's also used in bio remediation using bio biology to clean up wastes bioseparations is also another field that includes how we get the useful stuff that's generated by biologicals away from what's not useful. Um, pharmaceutical industry uses biology quite a bit to produce medicines and medical in devices and diagnostic tests are increasing in their use of, of biology. We're focusing on the biofuels portion of biology and chemical engineering. So what we're going to be growing is something called blue-green algae, which is actually not an algae, but a cyanobacteria, uh, or a blue-green bacteria. This is a special type of bacteria that actually carries out photosynthesis and um, uses sunlight and CO2 to create the energy that it needs to grow and divide and multiply. The interesting thing about blue-green algae or cyanobacteria is that it's not really eaten by anything else and so it's not an important part of the food chain which makes it an interesting thing to use for production of biofuels. We're not producing food and then turning it into fuel. So this is kind of the structure of a cyanobacterium. You can see the the cell membrane that contains all the parts of the cell and what we're interested in are the lipids that are in the cyanobacteria cell. These, th these lipids or the fats are located in the membranes of the cell. This includes the outer cell membrane um, layer. It also includes the thylakoids um, that are where the photosynthesis takes place and the thylakoid membrane is also has lipids. Also the ribosomes have um, their membranes have lipids in them as well. So you can see that there are lots of locations where the lipids are in the cell so lots of lipids per um, cell. So we should get a good yield of oil per cyanobacterium cell. So why is it that we use microorganisms? Why don't we just do those, these reactions to produce the oils that we want ourselves? Well, the interesting thing about uh, these cells is they're very specialized to use the energy from the sun and the CO2 from the air to produce the energy that the cells need to divide and, and um, create their cell structures. And the reactions are, are fairly complex and the cycles are fairly complex. So you, I'm just going to scroll through some pictures of, of what's taking place. Don't worry about remembering all of these things. Just kind of take a look and, and take in the complexity of all of the, the things that are happening in the cell. There's Calvin cycle to, um, for the carbon fixation and all these reactions are, are fairly complex and many so it's easier for us to grow the cells than it is for us to carry out all of those reactions to produce the oils so we let the cells of the algae or the cyanobacteria do the production of the oils and we just provide them a place to grow so how do we grow microorganisms well, what we use is something called a bioreactor, 
which is basically a reactor in which we um, pr provide the environment that little biological reactors or cells want to grow in. So this environment is created and controlled so that it's the best kind of grow growing environment for those cells or optimal growing environment. So what is it that algae need? Because we need to be able to supply them with the best growing environment, so we need to understand what it is that they need to grow. First, they need water. Uh, if they don't have water, they dry up and die. They need light. That's how they get their energy. And how can they um, have the best access to light? Well, uh, suspension in a solution is, is going to be um, optimal for them. They need the CO2 that comes from air, and they need trace minerals or nutrients that we will provide with a fertilizer. So what do they need to avoid? Well, they need to avoid clumping together. That would reduce their access to light and also reduce their access to CO2. And they need to avoid um, the toxins that will build up as a part of their life cycle. So photobioreactor design. There are many different types and designs and shapes of photobioreactors. I'm um, going to give you a few examples here. These are for your uh, thought in your design of a bioreactor. You can see banks of flat panels here or banks of tubes. Um, but basically here are some diagrams of some possible designs. A shows a flat sort of pan of algae. Um, B would be a vertical kind of plate design. C is a tubular design, a vertical tubular design, and D would be a large tank. E is sort of interesting in that the light source is actually inside the, um, the growing reactor, the container where the, the algae are growing, and the air sparger causes the air to circulate the algae around this light source. Now this is not something that we're going to be uh, doing. Our light source will be external to our reactors, so it's just an interesting um, case to think about. So we're going to use something called airlift mixing. It's the use of buoyant gas or gas that wants to go up in order to mix the liquid. And what happens is fluid uh, is drug along or taken along with the bubbles that are rising up. And so uh, we get circulation within the container where the bubbles are, are, are rising. <clears throat> we'll use little air spargers from a fish tank in order to give us that airlift mixing in our reactors in class. So how can we model the growth um, of the bacteria in a bioreactor? Well, it turns out that the bacteria, they follow the typical cell cycle of uh, dividing from one cell into two. And the simple math of this type of cell growth is an exponential math model. So for every one cell, it divides into two, which then divides into four, et cetera, et cetera, which is called exponential growth. So what are we missing here? We don't have a uh, exponential growth that goes on forever and ever and ever if we just have a, a bunch of bacteria or cyanobacteria growing in our bioreactor. So what do cells need to do? They need to eat, so they're consuming resources. They need to excrete waste, so they're buildups of toxins, and then cells die. So this is what gives rise to what's called a cellular, a typical cellular growth curve, where you can see on the y-axis we have the log of cell concentration. That's a natural logarithm of the cell concentration, or number of cells per volume, versus time on the x-axis. So what's happening during a bioreactor 
um, startup, when we initially introduce the um, initial inocula inoculation dose or amount of bacteria into our bioreactor, there'll be a lag phase where the, ba the bacteria or the algae are adjusting to their new environment and kind of just getting adjusted before they can really start growing. And then they move into an exponential growth phase. And this is where we see the cell doubling and the, uh, that mathematical mo model being followed uh, in the growth. And after a while, um, there are enough cells that they start to compete for nutrients and they compete for space and there's um, cells dying and we have a stationary phase where the growth rate is equal to the death rate. So there's really not an increase in numbers of live bacteria or um, algae within our reactor. And after a time, the nutrients have been consumed and the toxins have risen to a such a level that the environment is no longer good for growth of the bacteria and we enter the death phase. So these are the phases of cellular growth. We'll um, look for those in our, our reactors and uh, uh, be ready to start designing and building your photobioreactor next time in class.